Unlike our neighbors to the north, fishing in Iowa is primarily about rivers and streams. And while our state may not be home to 10,000 lakes, we are bordered by one of the longest, most powerful rivers in the world. The mighty Mississippi River is a major thoroughfare for commerce, agriculture, tourism, and wildlife. While thousands of tourists flock to take in the annual migration, the depths of the Mississippi River inspired just as much wonder to avid fishermen. Fishing the Mississippi is something else. For starters, when you consider the water levels, the powerful current, and the temperature variance, when it comes to angling, there is no habitat like this river anywhere in the Midwest. We got 100 species of fish in the Mississippi, and it's one of the challenges of managing the thing. You know, the, this is a fishery that's, that's out here. It's in the channel, it's in the current, you know? It's, you know, we have a whole nother fishery that's in these backwaters that are slackwater fish, your crappies, your bluegills. And so that's a whole different fishery. Scott Gritters has spent the better part of 30 years working on the Mississippi. And in Bellevue, he's the perfect guide for learning about the river, as well as the waters that form it. Now, Mill Creek here, it's crystal clear. This is actually a trout stream on the upper end. It breaks off into little and big mill trout stream. Thousands of creeks, rivers, and streams flow into the Mississippi. And the health of the river is informed by these tributaries. Mississippi River Pool 13 is loved so deeply by fishermen because streams like Mill Creek just south of the Lock and Dam are looked after. Still, the interconnected nature of the main channel and all of Iowa should not be taken lightly. We're at the end of every raindrop that it spits in Iowa comes through here. You know, so if we can keep that, that water clean the whole way through, wherever it lands to whatever stream it gets into, um, whatever river it moves into next, and then ends up in the Mississippi, you know, the better off we are all the way through the system for all the all interior fish and, and for the fish that are in the Mississippi. Of course, there is another rather large element in Bellevue that pretty much defines the fishing. Lock and Dam 12 has been in place for nearly 100 years, and it's not going anywhere. Luckily, it was built with the underwater inhabitants in mind. You know, the dam's here, and it's always going to be here, and we're, gonna, we're just going to have to live with the Lock and Dam system. One, one thing about the Mississippi Lock and Dams versus other dams is that the fish can migrate through it. This opposed to a, you know, a big earthen structure like the Sailorvilles, the you know, Coralvilles, the Red Rocks, you know, this doesn't always block their, the fish migration, um, which is a good thing. Th this river is still a river. You can tell we're in floating current. This is not slack water. You know, this is still the Mississippi River. It's not the Mississippi Lake. While Scott is focused on addressing issues of the Pool 13 ecosystem, fishermen can simply enjoy it. You know, I tell everybody it's as close to heaven as I'm going to get without going through the pearly gates, living in eastern Jackson County. You know. <laughs> oh, I love it here. You know, how fortunate are we to have fishing hunting, outdoors. Junior Miller is a staple of the eastern Iowa fishing community. Having fished the lock and dam pools for over 30 years, Junior knows every secret there is to angling on the mighty Mississippi. Well, fishing this tailwater here, you've got some, uh, you got some current going on here. And uh, this time of the year, these wallies and saugers really relate to this tailwater because it's the bait fisher here, you know. But that's that's the thing here. You got current going on. Uh, and sometimes there's a lot of current. When you get high water, it really gets wild out here. You know, only the good Lord knows what's going to happen on the water level, you know. Spring and summer may be more popular fishing months due to warmer temperatures and noticeably active fish. But Junior says the fall is prime time to drift out onto the river and cast a line. The fish are here, and I mean, they will catch fish. And they're getting into their, I call it their spawn mode. I compare them to like uh, salmon or something. Oh, yeah. you know, they keep working their way upstream. A lot of these river fish act, they yeah. migrate. Just, yeah. Even bluegills go to those overwintering spots, you know, every year they go to yeah. certain areas, you know. Right. Water Come this time of year, the sauger move up to the tailwater. One benefit of the Mississippi is the fish population is self-perpetuating. Unlike inland waterways that depend on stocking, the massive nature of the Mississippi allow for large populations to sustain themselves. Of course, that also depends on fishermen and women following take-home regulations. So this is a little sauger, okay? 
With the sauger fish, the limits are pretty loose. Battles. There's no size limits to a sauger, so you could keep a fish this size if you wanted, okay? But walleye in this section of the Mississippi River, you can keep them from 15 to 20 inches is when you can keep them. You can also keep one over 27 inches, just one. Beyond size, the bag and possession limit is the most important number to remember. A single fisherman can take home a total of six fish daily, with only 12 walleye and sauger combined allowed in your freezer at one time. So if an abundance of fish and a beautiful, unique surrounding sounds interesting to you, the Mississippi lock and dam pools are waiting. If you talk to any of us DNR people, you know, one of the things is we want to keep the Mississippi looking like a great wildlife refuge, you know? We want to leave that legacy um, that it is a place to go. It is, it is different than the place that you come from.